What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back to bring you those 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Now if you don't know, my favorite army is the Tau. I've liked the Tau since way back in 5th edition when Gersh and I started playing, and they've always appealed to me. I just like the whole battle suit type of uh, army. I don't really care much for their fire warriors, but when it comes to playing the Tau, I play Farsight. Because you could use battle suits as freaking troops, and that's amazing. So, I was like, it's been a while since we've had a Tau video, or at least it feels like it's been a while since I've talked about the Tau. So, today I want to talk about a very important uh, event that occurred to Farsight, and that was the battle where he ended up finding his awesome, perhaps demonic blade. And um, yeah, we're going to talk about that today. So without further ado guys, let's dive into this Tau lore. During the Tau pursuit of a fleet of orc asteroid ships to the world of Atari Vo, a number of them split off to the distant world of Arthas Moloch. Sure enough, Oshova's expedition neared that ancient world, and he picked up signs of orc infestation within the planet's zones. On closer inspection by the aircast patrols, there was little to no activity upon the planet's surface. The Greenskins had either conquered the indigenous lifeforms already, or perhaps they invaded a dead world. On the bridge of his flagship, Farsight's lips peeled back into a grim smile. The orcs would not lack for company much longer. Arthas Moloch was the latest in a long string of worlds to feel Farsight's wrath. Divided and frequently leaderless, the Greenskin orcs were slowly but efficiently taken apart by Oshova's orc killer Kadras. However, a strange phenomenon occurred at an eight-pillared temple dubbed the Great Star Days by the Aircast. Wherever an orc fell to the dusty stone, a bizarre explosion of light spilled out. Farsight himself oversaw this part of the purge, and he had killed dozens of orcs with his own rifle. He watched in fascination as, eventually, a blazing disk of multicolored light began to form above the dice. The shadows of the milling orcs beneath it dancing with a life of their own. A sudden gout of energy poured out of the disk like blood bursting from a dying man's lips. When its glow faded, the star-carved walls were covered with horned crimson aliens the like of which Farsight had never seen. The long-limbed figures cut into the orcs with swords so black they seemed like holes in space, their unintelligible war cries forcing his battlesuit's audio cutouts to engage. More goblets of energy spilled out of the blazing disc, and dozens of bright pink figures cartwheeled and capered out from wherever they touched. Raising their comically long arms to the skies, they sent blazing streams of multicolored fire into the Tau observers above. Flames that turned the prow of a passing piranha into shards of kaleidoscope glass, and flames that turned Tau to stone, to water, and sometimes statues of screaming bone. Shocked by what occurred, Farsight ordered the retreat, commanding his forces to fall back into the skies as quickly as they could. He himself was the only one to look back, and as he gazed down into this crackling disk, it began to grow larger and larger until it filled his vision completely. It seemed to him that some titanic void, a rip in the fabric of reality, mind-boggling scale, had torn the heart out of the galaxy. Within it writhed a trillion terrible deaths, each one calling out to him by his name. In that moment, Oshova was changed forever. He had beheld a danger far greater than that posed by the races of the Arakan, the orcs, or even the humans. This disk of light was a gateway to another dimension, and that dimension was desperate to break through. As blood began to trickle from between his eyes, Oshova lost consciousness. Farsight's battlesuit crashed headlong into a cobweb tomb, its automated systems providing just enough internment to support him from falling into a coma. When Farsight woke up, he had been retrieved by his med base of his flagship and the situation on Arthas Moloch had gone critical. There were Tau still planetside, and they were already preparing to evacuate. Drawn by the lure of battle, the orcs were rushing in their thousands to the site of the Great Star Dais. Fortunately, these orcs were throwing themselves into the fight with the mysterious red-skinned aliens, 
and they were driving themselves ever closer to extinction in the process. Farsight countercommanded the orders given in his absence. The Tao would not evacuate. He said that they somehow had caused this strange nightmare to awaken, and it was their duty to end it. The ethereals attached to the council nodded for their approval, insisting that they must personally monitor this new threat. When Farsight and his ethereal entourage came next to this disk, in a blaze of red light, two massive red-winged creatures twice the size of Farsight's battlesuit burst from the disk, and then some more came behind them. These beasts had feathers, and some had bat-like wings, but all in all, these monstrosities split off into two groups that headed off into the wilderness. As they winged through the skies, they roared and shrieked in a language that Oshova could not even bear to listen to, let alone translate. However, his broadside teams were the first to open fire. The rail rifle fire slammed into the ornate brass armor of the first monstrosity, tearing off a wing and sending it crashing to the ground. Seeker missiles and plasma bolts added to this firepower, and the second beast quickly turned around to the ancient temple. Just then, a third winged creature burst through a crumbling wall to fall upon the fire warriors hiding behind it. The giant alien brass ask cut several tau in half with every swipe. The second of these giant beasts dropped down from above, its clawed feet kicking Farsight backwards into the ruins. A shot from Oshova's plasma rifle caught it right under the chin, sending it reeling backwards but only for just a moment, before his curling whip lashed out and rip an arm clean off from his crisis suit. The battlesuit's directional scans picked up a weapon shape behind him, a sword that was clutched by the statue that had toppled over. Farsight darted behind the statue's rubble a split second before the beast's axe smashed clean through this figure and made it nothing but rubble and powder. The statue's curved blade fell free. Rolling sideways, Farsight snatched the sword up in a single smooth motion and swung it hard at the beast's midsection. However, this creature easily evaded the blow, launching himself up into the air and bounding past his position. As Farsight pursued the beast, he saw it bring its axe down into a nearby fountain with an overhead blow of such power that Oshova could hear the sharp crack of the flagstones beneath. A moment before Farsight could catch up with it, the beast once again bounded into the skies and ran off into the distance. Farsight had to fight the urge to continue his pursuit, but he sent command out to all remaining forces to rally at his position to re-establish a battle line. Many of his fire warriors were dead, slain by the capering beasts that had spilled from this portal, but his troops had died notably, fighting to the last, and the battle was still raging. It was a gruesome sight that greeted him at the sight of the beast's last attack that made Farsight's throat tighten in panic. Ethereal Aun Los had been cut in two, from crown to groin, gore still spurting into a fountain around him as the limp halves of his frail body twitched their last. A great keening cry went up from the Tau, establishing their battle line as the news of the Ethereal's death spread through the ranks. Farsight fought to restore order, issuing a series of crippled commands to hastily reformed teams into fighting strength, as he sought to make sense of the jumbled and confusion transmission interrupting broadcasts across his calm web. A great number of the brightly colored creatures had driven the second battle group back with their strange spectral fire, but for some reason they gave a wide berth to one of the worn down statues, east of the dice. The Tao took this opportunity to regroup under its shadow. Meanwhile, the ethereal that had joined the third battle group, Aun Diem, had been gored to death in an attack by a giant vulture-like creature. Farsight's warriors were in disarray. Trapped with orcs on one side, and the unidentified alien creatures on the other. The fire warriors were on the brink of panic. For more they shot the creatures down, more of them appeared. It was almost as if each kill caused two more beasts to replace the ones that fell. Tapping into the visual feeds of the battlesuits in the second group, Farsight examined their environment. In the cadre's mist was a great roped statue, a strange hexagramic medallion brandished in its grip. And something struck Farsight as odd about that symbol. 
For one thing, when he looked at it, the pain that had flared in his head seemed to subside. Acting on instinct, Farsight ordered his warriors to retrieve this talisman from the ancient statue and carry it towards the flame beasts. A few tenth seconds passed before, but the report came in that these aliens were indeed falling back before it. Aun Diem's leaderless Kadra adopted the same tactic after finding a similar medallion at their own rally point. Farsight took a moment to think on the words that Pure Tide had taught him upon the peak of Mount Kanji all those years ago. To secure victory, the wise must adapt. Ordering all three battle groups to converge on his position, Farsight rearranged his battle plan in an instant. The Fire Warriors and their support teams would engage the Orcs, forming a great battle line around the Great Star Dice that could not be breached under any circumstances. The Crisis teams alone would engage these new foes at the Crackling Disc itself, and the Hexagramic Medallions would be brought to Farsight wherever they were found. Above all, he ordered, no blood must be spilt on the Dice. If a pilot was hit, he must withdraw immediately. The Chao at first were perplexed by Farsight's orders, however, they carried them out to the letter nonetheless. Oshova and his battlesuit Kadra stormed the Great Star Dais as his fire warriors kept a defensive perimeter so that no more orcs could reach this fight. Flamer armed crisis teams burned the remaining greenskins that still fought upon the Dais to a crisp, darting out of reach from the crimson skinned aliens wherever they came close. As clouds of fire washed across the ground, the blood that covered the flagstones dried and clotted to a crusted film. A howl of dismay sounded from the strange crimson-skinned creatures, reaffirming what Farsight had suspected. The beasts needed blood to survive. A warning echoed across the dais from the brave Monat, who was the last to claim the title of Commander Brightsword. He had spotted a trio of the massive, winged beasts plunging from the skies. Each had their axes raised as they dove with recklessness momentum, straight for Commander Oshova. Farsight raised his captured blade high in salute before flicking it outward, and the hexagramic medallions that hung loosely around it sailed in a lazy arc towards the crackling disk in the center of the dais. A moment before the winged beasts fell on Oshova, the medallions passed into the blazing energies. A tremendous backblast boomed from this portal, knocking every fire warrior in Christ's suit into the dust. As they gradually helped each other up out of the rubble, they saw that the skies were clear, and every single one of these creatures had disappeared without a trace. In the wake of the strange battle, Farsight and his warriors plunged the ruins of the remaining greenskins. No victory shouts were heard, no warrior vows rang out. Instead of celebrating their double victory against the creatures infesting Arthas Moloch, the Tau returned to their fleet in silence. The last of the Ethereals had been found, headless, surrounded by his unconscious bodyguards. All three Ethereals were gone, leaving the Tau bereft of guidance. The Enclaves had lost all their spiritual leaders in a single tragic battle. Oshova could not strike the feeling that this had been no accident, that some infeasible force had conspired against his people by killing the Ethereals. Though all of his training and formidable intellect rallied against it, the visions he had seen in that crackling portal stayed with him night and day, infecting his thoughts with ever more dangerous consciousness. There was more to the universe than progress, unity, and destiny. Something lurked behind the material world. Something foul, hungry, and immeasurably evil. And that concludes the epic battle of Arthas Moloch. Now, one thing I want to ask you guys is, what do you guys think about this? Because I feel like this was no mere demonic incursion. I felt that there was more going on than what meets the eye. Because, yeah, you had demons, but the demons here that were summoned were Korn and Zeech demons. Uh, it says that they were avian, bird-like creatures. That's Zeech right there. And uh, with everything with the blood, you had bloodthirsters, bloodletters. So, the thing about these two chaos gods, Korn and Zeech, they hate each other. Korn hates psychers, and Zeech thinks of Korn as nothing but a brute, not, you know, not trying to plan ahead or rely on intellect. So, why were these two chaos gods working with each other 
for what seemed to be the purpose of killing off the ethereals from the Tau. I don't know, I feel like there's more going on here. Um, without the ethereals, like Farsight said, they had lost all their spiritual guidance. So maybe they were trying to corrupt some Tau, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like hopefully we'll get some more answers in this 8th edition Tau Codex, but we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, let me know what thoughts and theories you guys have on this whole battle between the demons and the Tau, and we can talk about it in the comments. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Stay tuned for more 40k lore each and every day. This is the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. <laughs>